What's going on guys? Um, it's October 17th, not that that really matters, but I could not wait because I have been reading so many scary stories recently and I just like have wanted to film a no sleep video so bad. So I kind of got it mixed up. So like no sleep is like not the, like paranormal is a different one, although there are some paranormal and no sleep, but basically this is just like scary stories in general. So um, this is not like a let's not meet um, or necessarily paranormal, but um, I found one. I didn't read the story. I just read like the comments that people had and they were like, oh my gosh, make a part two. And the person just said like they're not going to make a part two. But I figured like part one would be perfect because it seems pretty long. Not like super, super long. I think I'll be able to read it like pretty, I don't know, like where it won't be like forever. But um, like long enough that it should fill up like an entire video. So I'm only doing one story and the story is called my sister found her missing boyfriend and I really wish she hadn't so I'm just gonna jump right into the story also I'm sorry I keep looking over here at the viewfinder but you guys are here you guys are right there but I keep looking over here where you guys aren't at so apologies but it's all right you guys don't have to look at me you can literally play this as a podcast because I'm just gonna read the story for you guys three months ago my sister's boyfriend went missing they had been dating since they were each 14 years old, and five years later, they were more in love than the day they met. At least, that's what she told me, and later what she told the world when she appeared on the news, pleading for him to come home. Candace, my sister, is someone I can only describe as a light, a beacon of love, and someone who cared for me when no one else did. It wasn't easy for us growing up. Our parents worked hard just to keep a roof over her head, and Candace made sure I was fed, safe, and entertained whenever I was left in her care. I'm only three years her junior, but that was enough for her to feel responsible for me. Looking back now, I'm amazed we didn't quarrel as sisters did, despite my constant and sometimes nagging presence in her life. When she met Morgan, he became a part of my life too. He would hang out with us, helping her care for me and never raising an issue with me tagging along on their adventures. I loved him in the same way I would love a brother, and I'd like to think that he loved me too. They were so deeply connected, you'd think they'd been married for years. Candace would tell me how sweet he was, show me all the gifts that he would bring her, and you could see the light in her eyes whenever his car came down our driveway. That's why when he stopped responding to her messages randomly three months ago, she knew something was wrong. It was hard to get the police involved, as he was 19 and from a family more dysfunctional than our own. They thought he was a runaway, and despite Candace's pleads, they declined to raise any alarms until further evidence presented itself that something more tragic happened. This didn't stop her from posting on social media, eventually assembling a team of people who helped her search for her missing love. She went on the news, created a YouTube channel documenting everything she found or didn't find. She was obsessed. Never once have I or will I blame her for that. Last night, Candace came into my room around 3 a.m., flipping on my light switch and waking me up without warning. Groggily, I shouted at her, What are you doing? Get out. Liza, stop. You have to listen to me. I, I just got a text message from Morgan. I sat up like a rocket, suddenly very, very awake. You, you what? From Morgan? Yes, well, not on his phone, but a text from him. I know it's him. He says so. I sighed. Candace, don't you think it could be... I'm sorry, but couldn't it be someone messing with you? Her eyes stared back into mine wildly. I thought so too. So I said, prove it. He did. He told me something else no one would know. Something just between us. Something that I didn't even tell you. Or my friends. She had my attention now. Show me the messages, I said. I can't. He told me not to. He's in danger, Liza. I can't put him in more danger yet. No one can know. But I need you to cover for me. I'm going to meet him. He is in it bad, I guess. Somehow got mixed up in something. So he needs money. He wants to see me to explain. I'm going to meet him. You can't be serious, I said. Candace, this isn't safe. What if this is fake? Or if he is okay, what if someone put him up to this? That's a risk I'm just going to have to take, she said. I knew from the look in her eyes that nothing was going to change her mind. Well, at least let me go with you. No, you have to stay here. If something happens to me, 
You need to be safe and try to get us help. I can't risk bringing you too. Besides, he said not to tell anyone we're meeting. I knew it was a stupid idea. I knew she was being set up, but something inside me knew she was going with or without my blessing. I couldn't stop her. So I asked her to tell me where she was going so she could have me on the phone so I could hear what happened. And I wanted her location on. I wanted her to know every move. And I told her if she wasn't back by 8 a.m., I was calling the police, regardless of who Morgan may or may not be mixed up with. She agreed with some reluctance. The meetup was supposed to be at a lake an hour out from home. She was to be there by 5 a.m. to stay an hour or so and be back at 7. At 8, I would call and report her missing. I'd heard her throwing stuff into a bag and rushing out the door. Her car peeled from the driveway, and I had the sinking feeling it would be the last time I saw my sister. They always say, trust your gut. I just wish my gut was wrong about this one. She called me just before 6, letting me know she was pulling up to the lake. I don't see anything yet, but he's probably just in a shadow or something, hiding. Then I heard a rustle as she put her phone in her pocket and got out of the car. Baby. Oh, baby, it's really you. I heard her voice, shaky with both fear and elatement, which soon was overcome with static as the phone bounced around in her pocket. It's me, Cheerio. I nearly stopped breathing. It was Morgan's voice. It was Morgan's nickname for her. There was no mistaking it. It, it was really him. I cringed a little as I heard the kissing noises, the sobbing, and the almost hysterical laughter. I breathed a little easier after nearly ten minutes had passed with nothing happening other than their emotional reunion. He started to tell her that he was in trouble and that he needed her to know that he was safe. He was figuring it out, but he couldn't tell her much. I wanted to tell him we could help him figure it out, to just come home, but Candace did that for me. Baby, you have to understand, I can't come home, not yet. I just need to see you, to hug you, and to tell you that I'm okay. There's something I couldn't tell you in text though, something you have to know. I didn't leave on purpose. I found something when I was hiking one day, something that I think I shouldn't have. What was it? Candace said. The tension in her voice was unmistakable. If I tell you, you have to promise to believe me, however crazy it may sound. Of course. Suddenly, the wind picked up. I could hear it howling around them. The panic rose in Morgan's voice. Shoot, shoot, it followed me here. I thought I got away. I thought I was safe. Baby, you need to go. It's not safe here for you. Oh, oh no, it's not. The phone was overcome with static. I couldn't make out any words, only voices, rising louder and louder, then screams pierced the microphone. I dropped my phone, diving it to stop him from hitting the ground for fear it would break that I would lose the call. I grabbed it and raised it to my ear again. The screams were there, but it sounded like more than just Candace and Morgan. It sounded like hundreds of voices, as if they were caught in some kind of morbid echo. I wanted to hang up, wanted to turn off this horrible sound, but I knew that if I did that, I'd lose them forever. My decision was made for me when my call was disconnected. I heard the beeps that indicated a lost signal, and then silence. I called again and again to no avail. My sister had taken the car. I couldn't go after her. My only option was to call the police to tell them everything that had happened. They asked me to come to the station. They wanted a formal statement from me. I told them I could when my parents got home, but instead they sent a cruiser to pick me up. They said it was urgent that they speak with me. I was relieved to hear that they were taking me seriously. When the two officers pulled up to my house, they asked if they could come in. They wanted to speak with me as soon as possible, and it would just be easier to talk here, so I let them in. They asked me about Candace, about where she went and why. I told them everything, told them about the text and the lake, about how she was on the phone with me the whole time. I told them it was Morgan that she met. I heard it myself. They listened to me the whole time, writing things down and exchanging glances. The female officer asked the male to leave. She took my hand and asked me to repeat my story again. I told her that I had said the whole truth, that everything I said was what happened. She grabbed my other hand the way a mother holds their child when telling them bad news. Liza, we found Morgan's body last night. It was buried in the woods, 30 miles away from the lake Candace drove to. He, his body is with a medical examiner right now, but it's clear he's been dead for some time, probably since around when he went initially missing. I stared at her in utter disbelief. That, that can't.
can't be. I, I heard, I heard him. I stammered out, not believing what I was hearing. Look, I don't think you're lying. I just think, I think you've been misled. Whoever killed Morgan, oh, yeah, we think there was foul play involved. Whoever hurt him may have wanted to hurt your sister too. We have officers on the way to the lake. We will do everything we can to find your sister. I couldn't hear it anymore. I broke down, tears running down my cheeks. I sobbed as she pulled me in, letting me cry on her shoulder. They haven't found her body. They haven't found my sister. Her car was parked near the lake and they found her footprints in the mud, first walking, then running towards the shore where I know she saw Morgan. They didn't see any prints returning to her car and nothing showing that she went into the woods or the lake. What scares me is that they only found one set of footprints. It was as if Morgan had never been there. They told me no one else was there. They think she walked herself into the lake after not finding Morgan. They think it was a cruel trick and that she couldn't take the pain. I have trouble believing that though. I know what I heard. I know whoever or whatever hurt Morgan hurt her too. And based on how quickly Morgan died after going missing, I'm pretty sure my sister is gone too. I just hope I don't hear from her because I don't think I'd be able to stop myself from going to find her. That was really good. So I love stories like this. They just like kind of leave you just thinking at the end, like what could have happened? I mean, it could have been, you know, a fictional demon or something that killed Morgan and then, you know, was trying to take Candace as well, but we don't know the motive or anything. So it kind of just like up to you to kind of just like think it through and like whatever your theories are. So it's very well done. The writer, um, she's on Reddit, Insomnia Storyteller or Insomnia underscore Storyteller. Um, is very good. Very, very good. Um, it honestly didn't take as long as I thought it would. So I can definitely read another story if you guys want. So you guys are fine with that. I'm just gonna do it anyway. So let me find a story. All right, this this next one is by the same uh, storyteller just because I figured like we I liked her last story or him, her, her, them, their last story. <laughs> so I figured like reading another one of theirs would probably be good too. So this one was called, or this one is called, I looked in my grandmother's mirror. And now I freaking hate my reflection. I don't remember my grandmother's house fondly. Standing in the frigid attic of a massive old colonial, I cursed the old woman for dying and leaving my sister and me with this mess. It was freezing and the light was dim. I could hear the rain pounding in a distant dripping somewhere that probably meant a leak in the roof. I didn't care. That was Julie's problem. I was just here to help her because that's what sisters do. At least, that's what I told myself. Grandma was a collector, or rather, a hoarder. The floor wasn't littered with soda cans and used napkins. Instead, Grandma collected antiques. You could probably furnish multiple homes with just the stuff in her attic, and there were two other floors full of crap. I tried to get Julie to hire an estate service. After all, some of this junk had to be worth some money, but she refused. She cared more for Grandma than I did, and though she wouldn't admit it, Grandma loved her more too. I took the attic to get away from my crying sister. I couldn't stand her tears, but more so, I couldn't stand myself from not having any of my own. It's not that I didn't love my grandmother, but we just never shared a bond like she and Julie did. I was the problem child, always rambunctiously parading up and down the halls, threatening the integrity of her precious antiques. I remember one time I broke some old vase she had. If looks could kill, grandma would have killed me three times over. Julie, on the other hand, could do no wrong. She spent hours in the kitchen baking with grandma, would sit on the porch and sip tea with her. Pretty much anything they did, they did it together. My thoughts were shattered by a drop of water landing directly on the top of my head. I recoiled, looking up to see a small hole and another drip forming, pulling down from the beams above. As I reversed, my hand brushed something covered in a sheet, after breaking through the layers of dust and cobwebs, of course. I don't know exactly why, but I tore the sheet of whatever was happening underneath. I found a dusty frame surrounding a filthy standing mirror with a slight crack running through it. I paused for a moment, remembering this mirror. It used to be in my grandma's closet. I remember it specifically because Julie had been terrified of it. Julie and I were at grandma's for the night. She was 11 while I was 13 and feeling particularly bored. I dared Julie to go into grandma's closet while grandma was downstairs cooking. It doesn't sound like much, but we were specifically forbidden from entering the walk-in at the back of her bedroom. Neither of us knew why, 
but I did note that Jolie wouldn't enter the closet on just a dare. So, as a good older sister does, I threatened to tell mom about the boys she had kissed at summer camp. Her eyes grew wide as she begged me not to. I told her she had to go into the closet for a full 10 seconds, and then I wouldn't tattle. Begrudgingly, she opened the door and took a step in. Oh, this isn't so bad, she said, taking another step in. I stood in the doorway, standing lookout. That's when Julie screamed. It was probably the worst sound I'd ever heard. I honestly thought she was being murdered. As much as I hate to admit it, I froze. I didn't know whether to run, to aid, or take off to save myself. Instead, I stood there like a deer in the headlights until Grandma arrived at the top of the stairs. I stood outside while Grandma held Julie, comforting her and telling her it was all going to be okay. I tried to ask what happened, but Grandma just shushed me and led us downstairs. We watched Julie's favorite movies that night, and Grandma made sure to lock her closet from then on. I thought Grandma would be furious, but instead she just looked sad. After we were sent to bed, I asked Julie what happened in the closet. The mirror, she said. I, I saw a ghost in the mirror. You saw what? I said, trying to suppress laughter. A ghost? That blood-curdling scream over a ghost? I'm serious, Keen. When I looked in the mirror, an old woman was staring back at me. She had this gray hair and a wrinkled face, and when I started screaming, she screamed right back. I didn't believe her, but figured making fun of her would get me nowhere. She spent the next 13 years terrified of that mirror. I tried to bring it up again when we were older, but she shut me down instantly, saying that she didn't want to talk about it. I dusted off the mirror and realized I had been keeping my eyes shut to avoid looking at the reflection. Stop being stupid, I told myself. What Julie had seen was just something from a child's imagination. To prove it, I decided to count to three and open my eyes. If I saw an old woman, I'd smash the mirror and run. If I didn't, I'd pretend I was never afraid in the first place. One, two, three. I opened my eyes and saw myself. There was nothing odd about the reflection, save for that I looked so freaking tired. Jeez, why didn't Julie tell me that I looked like crap? After another hour of putting knickknacks in boxes, I went downstairs to look for Julie. I hadn't realized how late it had gotten and wanted to go. I found her in the kitchen, packing up Grandma's prized Pyrex dishes. One day they'd be worth so much money, she'd always tell us. Julie would nod along while I rolled my eyes. Jules, let's get going. I started searching for her purse, searching her purse for the car keys. Now? Keen, have you looked outside? I turned to the window and the rain had turned to snow and was starting to come down in droves. There was no way we were leaving. Not with the dirt road grandma's house was on being covered in a thick layer of powder and sleet. Julie, why didn't you tell me it was snowing? I don't want to spend the night here. I haven't packed a thing. Oh, shut up. You know grandma has sweaters you can take if you need. Besides, I bought frozen pizzas. You mean you knew we'd stay here this late? I tapped my foot, a bit annoyed. Well, I knew it was a possibility. We don't have to work here all night, but I figured we may be here for a while. Fine, I muttered, walking away before turning around. By the way, why didn't you tell me I looked terrible? What do you mean? You always look terrible, she said, smirking. I mean, I saw myself in that mirror and I looked bad. You know, the one you were so freaking scared of, you baby, I teased. And no, there wasn't an old lady screaming at me instead of a reflection. She dropped the dish she was holding and shattered it on the ground. Grandma would have been mad. It was one of her favorites. What did you say? I said I saw my reflection in the mirror that you were so afraid of. The one in Grandma's closet, remember? She moved it to the attic after you saw an old lady in it. Keen, please. Are you sure it was that mirror? Yeah, positive. Grandma described it to me in excruciating detail after you freaked out to make sure that I never looked in it. Why? Please. Please. Oh, no. Keen, sit down. Grandma. Grandma told me something about the mirror a few years ago. Huh? I raised my eyebrows in curiosity, and a twinge of fear struck me. Why was my sister so concerned? A while ago, I asked Grandma about the woman I saw in the mirror that day. I asked her if she knew what I'd seen what it was. She told me, she, she said it was, oh my gosh, I can't do this. She buried her face in her hand before continuing. She told me it shows you what you'll look like when, when you die. What? I said, now a bit more freaked out. 
You're kidding me. I really wish I was. When I asked her about it, Grandma had me look in the mirror a second time. I saw the old woman again. She was me. She had the same eyes and the same nose. Sure, she was older and wrinkled, but it, it was me. I, I knew it. I couldn't help it. I got up and ran out of the room. I raced up to the stairs of the attic, going to look in the mirror again. Julie ran after me, begging me not to look, telling me just to come back and that we could figure it out. I refused to listen, running to the mirror and taking it all in. Julie ran up next to me. I looked over at her, tears welling in her eyes, then looked back to the mirror. I saw myself, my hair a bit greasier, and my clothes with a bit more dirt on them than they had in the moment. But what scared me the most was the woman next to me. It was Julie. If Julie had aged 60 years in the past 10 seconds. I broke down in sobs, with my younger sister holding me as I cried. I know I'm going to die here. I don't know when, and I don't know how, but I believe the mirror. Grandma would always say you can never cheat death, and I believe her. What I want to know now is just how is death going to find me? And that is that story, which is so creepy. Uh, honestly, if you could like see what you look like when you're gonna die, and you look and you're like, you look the same, like you look your, your age, heck no. I would wanna be in Julie's position, honestly, because at least I know I have more time. I would just be anxious as crap if I'm just sitting there and I'm like, it's gonna happen soon and whew, freaky. Well guys, wow, I'm hiccuping. Well guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love these no sleep stories, they're so creepy. I just love them. But anyways, I just wanna be able to read some today because I don't have a lot to do. Well, I do, but I'm procrastinating. So um, I thought I would just like do some stories for you guys. But I love you guys, and I will see you very soon. Hopefully, I will film another video this week. Um, and hopefully, I'll get this one up either today or tomorrow. But um, it's the 17th, so we'll see. Well, watch, it's going to be out on, like, November 15th. <laughs> All right, I love you guys. See you in the next one. Peace out.